Hey everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for today's uh, second video. You know, I'm going to be talking about prominent points of control because there was a question that came in uh, from uh, Nizar Nadaf. hope I got your name right. Um, he's saying, um, hi Mike, your videos are really helpful. I like the video about prominent point of control and how to use it with divergence to create a system. However, Go Charting Platform uh, does lose the signals while scrolling and I noticed I missed a few trades because of that. I hope you can make a video. Uh, on the same and you know go charting is a for those of you that aren't uh, necessarily familiar with go charting yet it is a web-based platform that has uh, recently added my indicators um, I've worked with the programmers directly to make sure everything works uh, properly as opposed to you know I see a, a lot of people out there copying my indicators and um, you know sometimes they, they really miss the mark on some but and I don't say anything I just let, let the people out there use it you know it does give sort of a bad name to it but uh, you know people misunderstand the order flow but anyway you know the thing with go charting is you know the guys that are behind go charting the, the whole team there they uh, they're all in on order flow right I mean I've had conversations with them and you know they're they're not just building a platform for traders um, just to have one out there they follow order flow as well, so they get it. They understand its importance. Uh, but getting back to your question, you know, when you scroll sometimes, right, um, you know, you, you, you can miss things. What I would suggest is you go to, let me just pull this uh, chart up here, and go, you know, at the bottom of your screen down here, okay, you have um, sort of different chart layouts, right? This is full screen. You can go, you know, two rows like this. You can go side by side. You can even go four rows, okay? so. You know, what I would suggest is I would either use the sort of the two columns or, you know, the, the, the four charts like this. And, you know, keep your chart, you could even go like that, you know. Um, you know, sort of keep your main chart in focus, right? This is like your, your footprint that you're going to be scrolling through, you know, and just checking out things. And let's get back here, right? They got this little arrow here that will point. But you could also keep a chart, you know, if you have a chart like this, you know, on the right hand side or if you have it on the left, a bar chart, you don't necessarily need to have the bar statistics on there. It's just going to take up space. But you could scrunch up your chart, right? The nice thing about the Go Charting platform is you can scrunch up your chart and you can still have the indicators, you know, highlighting stuff. So like here, this is your bullish prominent point of control down here. At 43, 72 and three quarters. You can see another one came in here um, to catch that big move up, right? And you can see over here earlier in the day when we got up to, uh, you know, that high up there at, at 08, there was a bearish prominent point of control, another bearish prominent point of control as the market sold down. Now, you don't need to necessarily, if, if you're concerned with, you know, sort of missing some of these signals, just keep a chart, you know, use, maximize your chart space, okay? I said go charting they have where you can split it up um, you know because it's one thing to be looking at the footprint right and, and I get it right you want to sort of scroll back and, and see things and the thing with uh, go charting depending on how you have your order flow settings right for the tick manager right if you have uh, auto mode you can see I have it turned off auto mode and um, if you turn it on, you even get the format volume where you can format uh, you know, sort of the, the lot size, etc. I know some people like to go in and sort of have this custom setting. And sometimes when, you know, when they scroll, you know, they sort of bunch up their chart, it will automatically aggregate their chart. I prefer to look at each tick by itself, um, especially on the E-minis. Really, the only chart that I would aggregate ticks on is NQ or MNQ, just because, you know, if you're trying to look at uh, M and Q, for example, just pull it up here, All right? You can see now it's changing, obviously, this other chart here. Um, it's, you know, it's quite, the bars are quite big, okay? So depending on your screen size, I mean, I got big monitors, so, you know, I'm able to fit a lot of information, but, you know, if you're trading, if you're on a laptop or something, it could be very difficult. But, you know, what I would suggest is Definitely, you know, try to maximize, you know, find a good layout for your screen. I mean, you know, you can make this bar chart a little bit smaller, right? It doesn't have to be so big, but really what you just want to be alerted to is when those um, prominent point of controls are coming in, you know, because, you know, uh, 
Nisar, <laughs> sorry, I'm butchering your name, Nisar Nadaf, um, you know, because you're, you're working on building a, a system, you know, around prominent point of controls with uh, divergence. So, you know, definitely you know, maximize your screen space, uh, you know, by splitting the screen up. That way it's just easier for you, right? You always have one there that you can watch, right? Then you've got your other chart that you can scroll back and forth with, right? I mean, on this other chart, you don't necessarily need to have the footprint on there, but it's good to have it there, you know? So, you know, that, that's sort of my tip to you if you're looking for a way to, you know, sort of keep track on what's happening right now while you're looking at other stuff, um, you know, that, that may have just happened um, and trying to figure, you know, which trades to take. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this quick video. It's a short one. So um, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.